Welcome to Relish Books. Today I'm doing another quick talk on Mary Oliver, just sharing some excerpts uh, with you from the latest collections that I checked out. I mentioned them in one of my What I'm Reading videos, and I thought I'd just give you a little update on that, even though I've already talked a fair amount about Mary Oliver. But her work is just so beautiful. I These three collections were new to me. Obviously, they have a lot of poetry in them that I've already read because that's the way uh, poetry collections work. They're usually combined mostly of old stuff within like one section of new stuff. But The Leaf in the Cloud was new and really fun because it is broken into seven sections, but technically it's considered a single long poem. So that was almost all new to me and really beautiful. I enjoyed that a lot. Blue Iris was the one I was most excited about because the cover and just the name seemed so beautiful. I love how it has um, pressed flowers on the pages. They Something about the way they're printed, it makes them look really real. And so it looks like they're like these 3D actual flowers in the book. Even though they're in black and white, they just seem really real. Anyway, so it's a beautiful book. Some of the earlier poems in it are from her later period of life. After Mary Oliver hit the 2000s, her poetry deeply deteriorated. I feel like she struck a more casual tone. She really lost a lot of her vivacity and the sparkling fire of her poetry was diminished a lot. She got more casual. She will occasionally even start poems with a word like, okay, I hate that. Even if the rest of the poem is good, it's kind of spoiled for me when she says, okay, let me tell you about this. And it's like, that's not her. She did deteriorate, unfortunately. Her earlier work is what I love best. But later on, there were some beauties in here. And I thought that it would be fun really quick if I just read a little excerpt from each of these collections. Just to give you a taste of some of the beauties within these works to encourage you to read them because they are amazing. Not all of them are. And these are not like my favorites. It would be so hard to pick favorites. These are just some things that stood out as being um, beautiful and like a good example of what her work is like. And I apologize. I'm not. The reading of poetry is very difficult. It's a difficult art. And I don't know if I've ever heard anybody read poetry that I really liked. I only really like the sound of it in my own head, but I will give it my best shot, hopefully to encourage you to go and read it in your own head. So this is, I'm just going to read a section from the oak tree at the entrance to Blackwater Pond. Every day on my way to the pond, I pass the lightning felled, chesty, hundred fingered black oak, which summers ago swam forward when the storm laid one lean yellow wand against it, smoking it open to its rosy heart. It dropped down in a veil of rain, in a cloud of sap and fire, and became what it has been ever since, a black boat, floating in the tossing leaves of summer, like the coffin of Osiris, descending upon the cloudy Nile. So, that's just the opening to that poem. I think it's really beautiful and a good example of the, her style. She writes a lot about trees, a lot about all of nature, but trees in particular she seems to really love. West Wind, overall, this was probably my favorite collection that I checked out. This was just a really good, solid collection of hers, and I loved it. A lot of it was made up of stuff I've already read, um, but it was great. So uh, there were several I really wanted to read from this one, but I chose At the Shore, because I love whenever she writes about the beach. So. This morning, wind, that light-limbed dancer, was all over the sky, while ocean sopped up against the shore's black-beaked rocks, row after row of waves, humped and fringed and exactly different from each other. And above them, one white gull whirled slant and fast, then dipped its wings, turned in a soft and descending decision. Its leafy feet touched pale water, just beyond breakage of waves. It settled, shook itself open, its spoony beak cranked like a pump. Listen, here is the white and silky trumpet of nothing. Here's the beautiful nothing, body of happy, meaningless fire, wildfire, shaking the heart. And again, I'm probably reading these too fast. You really have to take your time with poetry and read it at the, read it at a breathing pace. When I'm trying to tell someone, a lot of people don't understand 
poetry. A lot of people don't understand why I like poetry. And it's hard to get into the rhythm of reading it. When you're reading poetry, again, I'm not doing a good example of it, but when you're reading poetry, it is meant to be read as you breathe. It's like a breathing experience. You breathe in a line, you breathe out. Um, and that's kind of the rhythm in which it's written, to my mind. I'm sure that's not a technical description, and people who actually know about poetry could probably explain it better. But that's how I think about it, and that's how I really enjoy it. Um, I wanted to read two little sections from The Leaf and the Cloud. I don't even know what section this is from. They're all just broken up into like eight, nine, ten in the seven long poems that make up this single poem of this book. But the poem is not the world. It isn't even the first page of the world. But the poem wants to flower like a flower. It knows that much. It wants to open itself like the door of a little temple so that you might step inside and be cooled and refreshed and less yourself than part of everything. Therefore, tell me, what will engage you? What will open the dark fields of your mind like a lover at first touching? So, those are a few little examples of Mary Oliver. Um, I love her work so much and um, it is best appreciated if read out in nature. So that's my recommendation for you. Thanks so much for watching and listening. I will see you next time. Bye.